If we're gonna play a game of screw, Mary kill, we kill this one. It's like you've got Old Faithful, you know, he's stable and, and does all kinds of things for you, but then you got this like hotness over here <laughs> in a layout that you really like. Welcome to the Texas Nerd House, y'all, where we lined up the three portable computers made by IBM during the 1980s. And I'm going to ask our resident keyboard expert to review and rate each of these keyboards so that by the end of this video, you will know which keyboard is the best keyboard from among the 1980s IBM portable computers. Uh, what did you want me to do again? Let me put on this mic <laughs> and the well, kid won't let me drop him. I thought it'd be fun for you to review the keyboards from the three IBM portable computers from the 1980s while he pulls on your hair. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> we'll start with the oldest one, the IBM 5155. Portable PC and so let me flip this thing on real fast. I wouldn't exactly call that portable. I'd no. say that's about as portable as a early mid 90s machine made out of metal. <laughs> Except it's from the 80s. <laughs> oh god, it's worse than that. <laughs> it's got the screen too. Yep, it's oh. pretty darn heavy by itself and look at how slow it's booting up. <laughs> oh man. I'm gonna take that disc out of there before it gets confused. All I can think about is just like every bad LAN party mod. <laughs> uh. We all were trying to make a version of that. I actually wonder could you fit an ATX motherboard in there? I'm not sure about an ATX motherboard per se, but a lot of people have upgraded this thing to at least a 386. Right now it's just an 8088. Oh wow. Yeah, I mean Gosh. this thing is basically just an XT in a portable case. <laughs> really? Yep. Well, I recognize this anywhere, and this is kind of one of the most available versions of the Model F. You feel free to leverage the key puller, which is over there by the other one. It's so sexy. It feels so good. I mean, nothing sounds or feels like work like an IBM Model F keyboard. I mean, oh, when you've had it, people think, oh, the Model M, that's that's the like king of all keyboards. It's the king of all producible keyboards, I guess. At least from the 80s. Only because they're indestructible. They're the Nokia phone <laughs> of keyboards. Can't kill them, can ya? Yeah, the, uh, the Model S, though, you can kill them a lot easier. Oh, yeah? Well, it's just because they have that many more mechanisms. Flipper mechanisms. So did you know that these are actually a membrane keyboard underneath? Uh -oh. <laughs> oh. Oh, Boyo seems to be pretty mad about that, too. Oh. Well, when it comes to the Model F, this thing is complicated. Um, it's actually very complicated. And it's one of the reasons why they're so expensive to produce. So what's really awesome about these is this is kind of the early bits of what we consider a computer keyboard. And so what you see is the contact spaces are very defined. The enter key isn't where you expect it. The backspace key ends up being where it is. Control is in its proper place. I say that control needs to be where we consider caps lock now. And if you notice, there's no kind of uh, <laughs> windows or command keys and multiples of control and alt, there's only one instance pretty much of any other key except for shift. Uh, shift is pretty much the one that gets doubled up. But everyone else, they just gotta go with it. Look at that massive, albeit dirty. Okay, if this baby touches it, we can't let, yeah, he's been touching it. <laughs> We're gonna have to wash his hands. We're gonna have to wash my hands. Do you wanna touch it? Do you wanna touch it? You know Do you, you wanna, wanna touch it? Bar bunch, huh? You wanna bap it? Oh, yes. You wanna baps it? I know you've been anxious to bap all the mice and knock them. I know. <laughs> Keep it out of your mouth. Keep it out of your mouth. It's touch dirty old keyboard. 
<laughs> such very dirty old keyboard. We don't know how many rats ran across this thing. Oh, this isn't from CR, luckily. Oh, well, that's an upgrade. <laughs> but actually, the key feel feels correct and not like anything's kind of messed up, which is another thing that happens very frequently with these is that the uh, whole mechanism actually gets frozen uh, because the lube that they used on these keyboards uh, tends to get stuck. And then also the plastic was not the same plastic they used in the later Model M's. As far as I know, the chemical composition's a little bit different. And so uh, it it's- different today. <laughs> yeah, it sticks. Well, it's gonna feel different anyway, because you're dealing with a much more complicated flipper mechanism in the Model F, which is why it just feels delicious. I mean, nothing feels the perfect amount of tactility and smoothness. In my opinion, the Model F is kind of the one to beat. Um, I just wish that uh, they made the, figured out a way to do the mounts with the uh, cherry mounts so I could reuse some of my keycaps, but it's okay. I have a fancy 3D uh, DLP printer. I can make my own. Well, you're ready to go on to the next one. All right, yes, let's move on to the next one. Down the line, we've got the IBM PC Convertible, model number 5140 from 1986, booting up now. This is one of those uh, that actually I consider a little bit of a thing of beauty. I mean, you think about it, how it actually raises the keyboard and has these beautiful dual floppies in a usable area. And even still, you know, kind of this screen doesn't look like garbage. I mean, think about how many looks like garbage LCD screens there are right now. Yes. In terms of this vintage. I mean, and you know it doesn't look as good now as it did back then. Oh, I'm glad you found a working backlight one. Yes, okay. ended up getting a working backlight one. Now, in a future video, we're going to make this thing swear like Lenny Bruce with the PC convertible speech adapter or something along those lines. That should be really funny, so definitely stay tuned for that. Okay, so, all right. Now, now I knew this was a Model F. I mean, a Model F is oh, completely distinguishable. But I'm not sure what this is. And let's see if we can give it a try. So based off of the key feel, it it's really weird because it has that authoritativeness that you get from like a Topra like BKE dome, like a dome over slider situation, which it absolutely could be. I mean, this is where I am not entirely sure because usually they don't feel this decent, you know? Ooh, nice little dir readout. Of course, always gotta do dir to start. <laughs> gotta do dir to start. How else are you gonna know what's here? <laughs> but the other end of the spectrum, I mean, these clearly feel like PBT keycaps. They are really nice, but ah. Oh. They have this mechanical feel to it, almost that says like it's something like a Matsua or something along those lines, like a, a weird Mitsubishi switch of some sort, maybe even an early Alps. Well, do you want me to- But not crazy early. It can't be that crazy early. Hmm. All right, we have to check. We have to check. Okay, All right. goes the checking. All right. All right, let's see if we can do this. I don't care about you, computer. You can be on. Whoa. The keyboard comes up, too. Yeah. Pretty weird, huh? It's Alps! Alps brown? Alps brown. Yep, that's definitely a brown color. Wow, those are really, really nice. Just enough tactility, but uh, a very linear feel. Uh, now I know why people really like these. Mm -hmm. I've never felt Alps Browns before. You know, it's funny because on Wikipedia, they say that one of the reasons this computer didn't sell well was due to the keyboard. And I think that your impression of it leads me to believe it must be some odd arrangement of the keys rather than the actual keycaps. The keycaps, just like I said, are for sure uh, thigh sublimated PBT. I mean, oh, yeah. just it's exactly. Nice. But I meant key switches rather than keycaps. The key switches, they're Alps. And these ones are actually in really good shape. There's no grit at all. That's why I was so convinced. Oh no. Uh, did you hit the key too many times? Perhaps. Yep. 
There it goes. It settled down. Yeah. Eventually, it, it it has to it has to give in to my will. Oh yes. Ooh, but I do like these Alps Browns. Oh man. Now, given this and how people describe Alps Blues, especially in comparison to uh, the Alps Clicky Whites, I'm gonna have to try and find some more. Mm. And maybe do a custom build at some point. Oh. Well, you're ready for the next one. All right, I'm ready for the next one. All right, here's the final one. This is the IBM PS2 P70. I believe it's from 1988. So why don't you wheel yourself on down a little bit. All right. Let's get started. Oh, All right. Switch. Now that is quite the switch. Yep, it definitely lets you know that it's being turned on. It's, uh, it's authoritative, much like a race car, right? Now, design-wise, this is nowhere near as pretty. Ooh, but it does have that... Is that a gas plasma screen? This is the gas plasma screen. Everybody loves a good gas plasma display. It does look sexy. I mean, it's kind of like the uh, VFD of the times in terms of, like, graphical displays. Well, isn't it also... I guess it is kind of a version of a VFD, right? You know, I'm not really sure exactly. I think it's a plasma, really. Well, yeah, I got. Well, yeah, it's a gas plasma. <laughs> Naturally. <laughs> 165. Not okay. Not okay. <laughs> Look at the IBM manual. Of course. <laughs> yeah, these things always do that. But why don't you press F1 anyway? That'll get us to continue along with the boot, and it'll get on with loading the content uh, the floppy disk because it doesn't quite have a this one's hard drive. so jank where is this supposed to fall down or not it does you press it in it's kind of like you know those clicky pens that the snaps the thing snap back and then it snaps out that is a not at all nice design by comparison the whole thing tends to have pretty jank plastic <laughs> construction to be honest it's, yeah that things like flipping out uh, uh, why is it trying to do it in German? Um, well, that's the version of MS-DOS that I actually found on the... <laughs> <laughs> somehow, this... You wouldn't believe this has any kind of German. I guess there's like a couple of lines on it that are in German, but otherwise you would never know. Um, well, in any event, you can hit F3 a couple of times to exit the setup and go back into the A drive. <laughs> Bit the shin. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I figured you'd probably understand that to some extent. <laughs> okay, now we gotta check this other dirty computer keyboard. This one is exceptionally dirty. That's so nasty. Okay, I can tell you immediately this is ABS. You know how I can tell it's ABS? Because we got shine. There's shine. It's shiny. Oh boy. Uh, and you see far more yellowing. <laughs> On the PBT sets, uh, you clean those suckers up, they look brand spanking new. But on these ABS caps, not so much. And we don't have uh, a whole heck of a lot of extras to them. I mean, we have a little bit of extra keycapping, but maybe not. Or wait, Spacebar feels ABS, but wait a second, that... That feels like PBT. Are these actually PBT? I think these might actually... Oh, let's hold off on that for a second. Okay. Okay. So someone managed to use this keyboard to the point of making PBT shiny. Do you know how much you have to use a keyboard to make PBT shiny? It's got to be like a New York Times journalist for 30 years. I mean... Yikes. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> just quality with a K. <laughs> quality. Oh, no. I think boy is like, no. Boy won't even look at it. Let's give this a feel. <laughs> it's a pretty nasty face, huh? This feels like the cheapest Alps simplified clone ever. Like, ah, uh, like, I can't remember... It feels like the like uh, clicky futabas. That's what it feels like almost. Those the white clicky futaba switches. Um, this is a very specific thing that I'm bringing up, but they're on kind of like cheaper mechanical keyboards. It's clearly still a mechanical keyboard, 
The only other thing I can think of is if it's like one of the really low rent Alps, like one of the really low rent, like, uh, like simplified Alps, but not the later models. What year is this from? This one's from 1988. I think this one is built in 89. Really? Yep. Cause I mean, how was this like the fancy one? They were pretty darn expensive. I mean, considering it's a 386 computer in 88, that's uh, pretty cutting edge. I mean, what would, <sighs> those feel nice actually though. <laughs> like this feels like cheap garbage. The switches feel like garbage. <laughs> the key plate, I mean, is there metal in this at all? I don't really <laughs> think other than like a grounding strap and uh, the casing with the power supply. There's not a lot of metal. Yeah, this feels like those Futaba white cross switches, like buckling spring with click plate kind of thing. But IBM never used anything Futaba. So I'm going to go ahead and say it's from that like really cheap era of Alps. I'm trying to remember. I just usually remember by the color and the era and then kind of like what the bumper click leaf thing looks like. Well, is it time to pull it off? I think it's time to pull it off. Here goes. All right. So let's see what this guy is. Try not to panic my computer speakers. Okay, I'm trying. We're going with the D. Well, the removal is fine usually. It's the... Oh! That is ultra cheap Alps. <laughs> All right, let's see the back. Oh, but it's too. still a standard... It's still a standard Alps mount. What is this? Is this like the Cherry ML of Alps? This is the Cherry ML of Alps. <laughs> I love Alps. I love Alps complicated and wow, this is the crappy Alps. <laughs> this is, but it's still, I mean, you can take the keycaps off this board and I mean, other than a few layout things, put them directly onto this one and a variety of other ones that we have. So I guess that's kind of a good thing. Yeah. So it was still standard mount. I mean, they were still able to do that kind of like universal keycap layout thing. But yeah, it's totally, it's dye sublimated PBT. You can tell once you get a little bit closer, you know, uh, these were not as perhaps well-made as some of the others because you can tell there's a little bit of skew to that D. Oh, no. That D is just a couple of, it's just like a degree off. <laughs> like <laughs> That's true, it is. It's not, for, it's not perfectly vertical. It's not perfectly vertical. What's going on? So, oh, wait, if you look at all of these, you can tell a number of these have like just a schmidge off. This D is probably one of the worst offenders though. <laughs> <laughs> it's all about that D. <laughs> that D. That D sucks. <laughs> Getting it as demonetized. <laughs> Would you say it's a little bit demotivating? <laughs> You're a demon. <laughs> I defy expectations oh, no. about this D. <laughs> At least the display is big. Yeah, it's a nice big gas plasma for sure. I mean, but... <laughs> you look at that like plastic and... I mean, the whole thing. The keyboard. <laughs> it just feels like it's about to fall apart. Well, yeah, they pretty much all are falling apart. <laughs> if you find one, it's pretty much guaranteed to not be together. <laughs> They were like, we need to make it lighter. How do we make it lighter? It is. Let's make everything kind of garbage. On the other hand, I'm pretty sure that you could drop this one from somewhere high up and it would survive. Maybe you break the neck of the CRT, but the plastic would survive. Well, I mean, I feel like for this one, they were definitely targeting somebody who's like, no, I actually have to take this places. Mm -hmm. But at the other end of the spectrum, they're like, we're not putting screws in anything. Screws add weight. Yeah, literally. Actually, the back of this thing has just two screws in it. I'm pretty sure the rest of it just snaps in. Oh! So you know you break those snaps and then you're pretty much hose the back of your machine. You can imagine a guy carrying this into a client's office and all the little just creaky noises it's making like the entire time because it's held together with snaps. Yep. <laughs> well, to wrap this up, I think I'm gonna guess which keyboard you like the best, and I'm guessing it would be the PC convertible. Okay, if I had to daily any one of these, I would definitely strip the keyboard off of this one. 
But I mean, in terms of key switches, I, it's like, how do you go up against the Model F, man? That's kind of like telling somebody that they gotta hate their own grandparents, <laughs> you know? And their grandparents have been nothing, nothing but good to them their entire lives. They can't hate their grandma, you know? In case you were wondering, <laughs> it's significantly heavier than a Model M. And I'm pretty sure a Model M has been used as a murder weapon at least once. Oh, jeez. Oh, you didn't hear any of that, yeah, did you? Documentaries about that on the far corners of YouTube, probably. <laughs> <laughs> if we're gonna play a game of Screw, Mary Kill, I mean, we kill this one. I mean, we yeah, know no, we no, kill. No, this one goes. This is hard, okay. Which one do I marry? It's like you've got Old Faithful, you know, he's stable and, and does all kinds of things for you, but then you got this like hotness over here in a layout that you really like. I don't know, I think a lot of people criticize this layout originally. I'm sure they did, but it's actually, I only rock 60% now, so I mean like, this is right up my alley. If this one, this is, this is that college boyfriend that you had for about nine months and you thought about bringing them to your parents then you're like I don't know if he's stable enough I don't think my parents are gonna be real into this art major with not a lot of future goals but he's got a really good conversation but then this 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 is your, uh, your classic pre-med student <laughs> nothing's gonna go too wrong he's gonna be pretty stable he's got some funness Ooh, he's got that feel you know I mean, you can support yourself. You don't need the Model F to keep going. You could absolutely spend time with the art major, but you know, you know you're gonna go for, you, you know you're gonna go for the pre-med student. <laughs> Alrighty, folks. Well, that is the family review of the three IBM portable computers made in the 1980s. Hope you enjoyed it. We're gonna take the winner. Not really sure who the winner was again. Pretty sure it was the 51 55 there. No, it's actually the 5140, wasn't it? Mm, yeah, Model Fs. <laughs> okay, Model Fs for the win. So we're going to take the 5155, and as a special bonus, we're going to compare it to other manufacturers of portable computers from the 1980s. We've been all together to figure out who the best manufacturer of affordable keyboard was during the 1980s. Oh, we know what's going to win. <laughs> well, who knows? You don't know it's in the lineup yet. Anyway. Ooh, Alps Blues. Ooh, <laughs> that'd be hard. Oh my God. Well, until then, bye y'all. What did you find out? Uh, <laughs> not really a find out, but uh, that is not a 5155. <laughs> yeah, I think I got them switched. I put in the wrong command line arguments a second ago. All the rest of these are correct. So uh, let's get the thing in going. And uh... <laughs> it's still in German. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. How, what, what does that say? <laughs> what does that mean? I guess. Uh, well, you, you better. You have three that choices. Out. You have three choices. How do you get out of this? I pick the first one. I pick letter A. Oh come on! You're gonna start at the beginning. Well, unfortunately, you were right. A is the correct answer in this case. You, A, I can't believe you. You're just like, I'll just go with the first one. You don't speak any of that language. Like, if it was in Russian, you'd have a better chance of figuring out what this says. Ah, oh, no, I'm getting right. drooled no, on. Let's put, the right one. Let's put an IBM logo. I think it's, what was this, two? And then two. Oh two. look, this decided to work this time. Before, the stupid numro up here was giving me weird symbols and I had to use the keypad, so that's cool. Uh, I think it's because it was in like caps lock for some reason or something. Yeah, I don't know why caps lock. Okay, okay, so now it's right. Now we're straightened out, huh? I can't Good. believe you randomly figured that out. <laughs> you're, you're total. <laughs> Charm is on my side, huh? Uh, no, I don't know about that. <laughs> It's like the one time I could use German in my everyday life. <laughs> <laughs>